Batteries are the essential source of power of your electric vehicle and knowing more about them will give you a better understanding of how they work, how much range you can expect to get, how long they'll last, and how efficient you are. Welcome to Gas and Watts, I'm Shane and here's what you need to know about EV batteries and how to charge them. Let's get electrified. EVs today mainly use lithium ion batteries with the most common types being nickel manganese cobalt or NMC and lithium iron phosphate or LFP. The biggest difference between the two types are energy density, temperature tolerance, cost, and life of the battery. What does that all really mean? Well, you can kind of think of energy density as the capacity of how much energy the battery actually holds, which will correlate to range of the car, but we'll talk a little bit more about range a little bit later in the video. Now, you've probably heard people talk about kilowatt hours when they're talking about the capacity of the battery or usage of the electric car um, and kind of thought to yourself, what does that kind of mean? Well, let's just start with what a watt is. A watt is a unit of power and kilo, the prefix meaning thousands, so kilowatt is 1000 watts. Now, kilowatt hour is the unit of energy that shows the amount of energy used. So as an example, think about a 100 watt light bulb. The amount of energy that the 100 watt light bulb would use in one hour would be 0.1 kilowatt hour or kwh for short so if your ev has a battery capacity of 80 kilowatt hours that just kind of means that the car can is capable of producing an energy of 80,000 watts for one hour of that's the amount of power that you're trying to you're producing which is quite a bit of power but that would be the battery's capacity or how big the battery is if it's a bit easier, you can actually kind of think of capacity in the same sense as the amount of gallons of gas used in an internal combustion engine. Now, before I kind of talk about range and the different calculations on how to determine how efficient you need to be to get the estimated range of what the manufacturers state, I'm going to talk a little bit about charging. Now, to kind of prefix this a little bit, I'm mainly going to talk about the American market of charging and I understand that there are other standards in different regions of the world, but I'm just going to focus on the American market for now. There are two types of charging when it comes to charging your EV. You can either charge at home using a home charger, such as the one that's right behind me, or you can use public chargers. Of those two options, over 90% of people tend to charge at home using a level 1 or a level 2 charger. Now, what do these levels mean? Well, level 1 chargers are fairly slow. They usually come with the vehicle that you purchase and only produce about 1 kilowatt of power and will only give you about 2 to 5 miles of range uh, per hour. So, I wouldn't recommend using level 1 chargers every day but if that's the only thing you have then I guess you would just have to plug it in right when you get home and charge until you leave the next day. Now level 2 will charge much faster since it's actually connected to a 240 volt NEMA 1450 outlet or like this one here behind me directly connected to this circuit breaker here to a 50 amp breaker and it gives you about 7 kilowatts to 19 kilowatts of power and will give you 10 to 20 miles of range per hour. There are two types of plugs that are usually in home chargers and they are J1772 or NACS which stands for North American Charging Standard but most people probably know them as the Tesla plug. Make sure you purchase the correct plug type for your EV although if you happen to make a mistake there are adapters that you can go from NACS to 1772 and the other way around J1772 to NACS. Now many manufacturers are already adopting the NACS plug so pretty soon it's going to get a lot less confusing on which home charger that you need to purchase. As I said earlier over 90% of people tend to charge their EVs at home. Now for whatever reason you can't charge at home or if you're traveling you're probably looking for a public charger. 
Now, a lot of people have misconceptions of public chargers being only DC fast chargers or Tesla superchargers, and that's just not true. There are actually level two public chargers, and they're usually located in workplaces, hotels, parking garages, restaurants, shopping centers, and other areas around town. Level two public chargers aren't any faster than level two home chargers, but since they're at workplaces or shopping centers, it's okay because you can go into work, plug in, do your day of work, and then when you get out, your car is charged. If you're not in a hurry, these level two public chargers are great to use. But if you're on a trip and you need something faster, you're probably looking for DC fast chargers or Tesla superchargers. Now, DC fast chargers also have two types of plugs that you can use. And the first one we'll talk about is Chatamo. And Chatamo is an abbreviation for charge the move. And it's also a pun in Japanese. And please excuse my Japanese here, but it says, Ocha de mo ikaga desuka, which means let's have some coffee or tea while we're charging. And then there's CCS type 1, which stands for combined charging system. Now, Chatamo is a standard that is mainly used in Japan, but early EVs such as the Nissan Leaf use these types of connectors. So, DC fast chargers will usually offer at least one Chatamo plug for these EVs. And they tend to be about a 50 kilowatt power output for the Chatamo plug. Now, the other DC fast charging connector is CCS Type 1. Again, CCS stands for Combined Charging System and is combined with a Type 1 connector or the J1772 connector. So it makes up that particular DC fast charging plug. With the CCS connectors, you have a little bit more selection in power output to charge your car. So you have 50 kilowatt, 150 kilowatts, and 350 kilowatts. Depending on how much power your EV can pull, you can, you'll select one of these power ranges for DC fast charging. And they tend to get your car up to 80% fairly quickly, depending on your state of charge. As for NACS EVs such as Teslas, you can use the Tesla supercharged network or if you want to use a DC fast charger, you can as well as long as you have the CCS type 1 connector to NACS adapter, you're able to use any of those chargers. As for charging speeds on Tesla's supercharging network, it all really depends on what version the supercharger is on. With V3, you can get up to 250 kilowatts of power. V2, you get 125 kilowatts to about 150 kilowatts of power. V1 offers 100 kilowatts of power. And if you find a smaller form factor in urban areas, it will give you about 75 kilowatts of power of charge. Tesla also has a version of V3 out there with the Magic Dock that allows EVs that don't have the NACS plug to charge at Tesla superchargers. There's not very many of them, but they are out there. But most recently, a lot of manufacturers are adopting the NACS plug, so you'll see more and more vehicles at Tesla superchargers that aren't Teslas, such as Ford and Rivian EVs. Now that you know more about batteries and charging, let's talk about how EVs get their range. Most ranges are determined by the capacity of the battery and how much power the EV pulls for daily driving. How efficient you are in your EV is determined by how much power it takes to drive one mile. So if you have different modes in your car like my Fisker Ocean does, the range is usually determined by the mode that takes the least amount of power. So if I change to fun mode or hyper mode in the ocean, it will definitely decrease the range that I am getting. This is also true for Teslas. If you choose a long range version of a Tesla, then the focus is more on how efficient it needs to be to use the power so that it can give you a longer range. If you select a performance version of the Tesla, then the focus again now is more power to the vehicle and less efficiency. So you'll get a bit of less range in those types of performance Teslas. Now we've been talking about efficiency and you might be thinking, what is efficient for an EV? Well, on average, if an EV consumes about 0.32 to about 0.35 kilowatts of power, then it's considered pretty efficient. 
Now we can actually do a lot of calculations on these numbers and then find out how efficient your EV is. Let's take my Fisker Ocean as an example and we'll use the efficiency top end of 0.35 kilowatts to do some calculations and see how efficient my ocean is versus what the manufacturer says it is. And we'll do it on a Tesla as well. Let's calculate the total range we would get with the 0.35 kilowatts per mile. So the equation for the total range in your EV that you would get is the total battery capacity of your EV divided by the kilowatts being used. So in this case, my Fisker Ocean has a 113 kilowatt hour battery capacity, and we're gonna take it and divide it by the 0.35 average consumption of EVs. And that will give me a total range of about 322.85 miles. Now let's do the same calculation for a new Tesla Model 3, which has a total battery capacity of 82 kilowatt hours. Now doing this calculation, we will get a total range of 234.28 miles. Now you might be thinking, well that's not even anywhere close to the estimated range on a new Tesla, and it's like 100 miles off. Now that says a lot because that means that a Tesla is more efficient than the average EV. It actually uses less kilowatts than the average EV. And Fisker, the Fisker Ocean is a little bit closer to those averages. So let's kind of do the optimal calculation. So you can actually do the optimal calculation for what they consider to be efficient, which I'll call this equation the efficiency equation is you can take the total capacity of the battery divided by the estimated ranges the manufacturers say they, they are giving you. So in the case of my Fisker Ocean, if I take the 113 kilowatt hours again and then divide it by the estimated range, which is 350 miles for my Fisker Ocean, you'll get about a 0.32 kilowatt per mile efficiency which is not too bad, it's more towards the lower end of the average EV efficiency. Now let's do that calculation again for the Tesla Model 3 long range version, which has a manufacturer an estimated range of 341 miles. And if you do that calculations with the 82 kilowatt hours, the efficiency rating for the Tesla is 0.24 kilowatts per mile, which is crazy efficient, which is way better than average. So Tesla is more efficient than the average EV that you have out there, which is pretty great. So you probably are wondering how do I calculate my efficiency for my EV now and see how efficient I'm driving per day or how much power I'm actually using for my EV. Well, you can use the per mile calculation on the amount of power you use from a day's drive divided by the miles you drove. So as an example to calculate how efficient your EV is, I recorded a day of my driving. So for daily driving, I usually charge my batteries up to 80% and for that day, I drove it all the way down to 62% state of charge. Now you can take that calculation and say, I actually use 18% of the battery. So you take 18% and multiply it by the 113 kilowatt hours of capacity, which will give you about 20.34 kilowatt hours that I use for that day. Then you can take the miles that you drove for that day. For me, I drove 60.8 miles. So if I take 20.34 kilowatt hours divided by the 60.8 miles that I drove, I use 0.33 kilowatts per mile, which is pretty good. It's still in the average of the EV consumption for efficiency. Now that's a lot of calculations to do and it only gives you an estimate of what you use for that day. And it's probably not 100% accurate what the Fisker told me my state of charge was at the end of the day, that 62%. I may have used a little bit more, maybe I was closer to the 61%, but I haven't gotten to that threshold yet to show me that 61%. So what I suggest is another easy way to kind of see what you use for the day is to look at your charge data from your home charger. So open your application and I can show you here really quickly. So it actually does show that I use more than the 20.34 kilowatt hours that we calculated. I actually use 21.8380 kilowatt hours. And if we do the calculation again, I get 
0.36 kilowatts per mile. So actually above the EV average consumption for efficiency. And if we do the total range calculation again, we get 313.88 miles of range from 100% to 0% state of a charge, which isn't too close to the manufacturer at estimate rate. Now that's probably because my wife and I drive in different modes. I tend to drive in earth mode and my wife likes to drive in fun mode most of the time, which contributes to the higher rate of power that we're using and we're just not as efficient as the average EV, which is fine for day to day driving for my wife and I. With that, I hope you like learning about EV batteries, how to charge them and how to calculate their efficiency. Leave a comment down below. Tell me how efficient you are with your EV, how much range you get from your EV. And if there's anything else you want to talk about, let me know in the comments. Consider subscribing to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed it. Please help us out and click one of the videos that are popping up right here. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.